Hello and welcome to this quick uh, slash tutorial slash uh, overview of the new 0.0.21 uh, of the entity component systems. Um, there's kind of been a bunch of changes. Um, the the main two big ones is the mesh instance renderer is now render mesh and it's in a completely different package now. Uh, it's called the hybrid renderer package. Um, and systems that use the barrier create command buffer um, now has to just add this add job handle for producer. So this kind of uh, eliminates the need to inject, I believe. Um, and they kind of got rid of a lot of their samples, but they have a new sample. Um, uh, it's a series of hello cube, hello cubes, and hello spawn a cube. Um, and I figured I'd just make a quick video that kind of covers uh, just like the basics of what this is and kind of maybe break it down into uh, something digestible uh, for people who don't have time to kind of pour through the examples or just want to see a quick video of what it is. So the first one is Hello Spawn a Cube. So I'm going to open this up and let's just look at the two. There's just two, um, a component and a system. So let's go into the component. So there's this new I shared component data. Um, and it can it says can have a struct uh, members with managed types. So it looks like you have a prefab here, and then this is a wrapper that allows it to be exposed into the Unity editor. So hello spawner component, and this is what we'll search for when we add it. Um, also, you'll need a serializable so that it can be seen in the editor, and then the hello spawner system. Uh, so it's just a regular component system. Um, if you've seen my other video, you'll know that consist component systems run on the main thread, job component systems are not guaranteed to run on the main thread. Um, oh yeah, so use these when you don't have to work when they can't be called from a job. Um, on create manager, so we create our filter here. Um, it needs to have a hello spawner and a type of position. And it seems like we make, we use this using, and uh, we convert our spawners to entity array, and then we just go through and instantiate the uh, the entity. So this kind of converts our game object into an entity. And um, then from there, we can get our component data, set it on that position, and then destroy this, destroy this system itself so that the spawner system, so this system only runs once. So kind of a nice way, instead of doing all the bootstrap way of, you know, before scene load and after scene load, this is kind of a nice way of just integrating your spawners within, um, within your systems and you don't have this weird like entry bootstrapping point. So just pressing play, cube spawns. And if we go to the entity debugger, which you can find from window analysis, entity debugger, uh, you'll see the different. So you'll see that we have some systems running and you might not actually see, well, in the entity manager first, we see that there's one entity, which is correct. That's where our thing is. Um, and they have this new show inactive systems, and we can see that there's a bunch of different systems not being used. So now it's kind of a lot cleaner for the entity debugger. Um, so in this, how they make the cube spawner is they make um, just a regular empty object. Uh, you attach game object entity script, um, the position component, and hello spawner component. So this is the two that that system needed that we have here, hello spawner and position. So you can make 20 of these and they will spawn everywhere around. Uh, and you just add a prefab as we saw in the hello spawner component, which I'm gonna switch back real quick. So we have our prefab right here. So, I mean, if we had like a public float something, you can also add to it. Seems like you can make shared component data have multiple things. So this might be useful for like adding extra materials or multiple prefabs. Um, that need to be shared, and once this compiles, we'll see that something will show up down here. And there it is. Uh, so, works just like a regular editor, uh, sorry, works like a regular game object. Um, <clears throat> and then the basic cube archetype, that's the prefab we're adding here. And this is, if we just use the new um, prefab editor, we'll see that this is just kind of exactly a regular position component with the render mesh component. Remember, you need this to actually render things in, in ECS. Um, if you see my previous video, you'll uh, this will look very familiar. We add the position 
component and a copy initial transform from game object. So what this means is we will automatically position this component to wherever the spawner is. Uh, so a good example is if we go to our cube spawner here and move it a little bit to the left, we should see it spawn off a little to the left than when I first press play, or a little bit to the right, since we're focusing. So you don't have to worry about updating the positions, you just have to update your spawner, and everything will naturally be copied over thanks to this um, helper object that Unity provides. So moving on to their second example, Hello Cube. If we open that up, don't need to save that. <laughs> we see we now have a rotating cube, and this has a position component, pretty much all the same things from our first example, uh, except we just have this Hello Rotation Speed component. So if we look at that, we'll see that. It's kind of the same structure, except it's an I component data. It's not shared data. Um, remember, you should only have shared data for things that don't change often, for values that don't change often. Um, uh, there's this cool disallow multiple components, so it doesn't make any sense for a component to have, uh, or an entity to have multiple rotation component speeds. Um, so we have this, and then this is what allows it to um, show it show in the editor. And then I think we had a one system over here, uh, well well commented by Unity. So I encourage you to, if you do have time, to you know play around with it yourself. Um, we can see with this burst compiler, um, burst compiler is used <coughs> when you're not adding or removing entities. Uh, sorry, components on entities. It will significantly speed up your um, your jobs. Uh, so we have a job here, um, I job process component, and then here's our filter. So it's only going to take things with rotation and hello rotation speed. Um, and then the execute is it just rotates based off of some math with the delta time, uh, which we pass in on the main thread over here. Now I know I'm, I might be going a little fast here, but uh, I kind of go slower in my RTS ECS example where we kind of talk about what a job component system and why when you would use this versus just a regular component system. Um, this is just for people who kind of want an update on what's new. Um, nothing here is exactly new, so I'm um, just kind of covering that. And once we press play, we'll see that it'll just start to rotate. And there we go. And it's just rotating. Cool. And I think the last example, don't want to make this too long, but I think the last example is the same thing, but it's just two cubes. And we have a rotating cube and a moving cube. So if we just press play here, we'll see we have one rotating and one that's just moving in the back over there. And if we dive into that, we'll see that this moving cube has a movement speed component and a rotating cube has our hello rotation speed component that we just covered. <laughs> and since we haven't covered the moving, let's go dive in there. Same thing here, serializable attribute for editor support. And we just have a value in here, show it in the editor, stuff we've seen. And we move into the movement speed, um, a, regular, a regular job, um, same as the rotation system, except we take in a hello movement speed. So it's only this job is only going to run on components, or sorry, entities that have a position and a movement speed. So if you get rid of one or the other on the entity, uh, this job will not run on that specific entity. Um, and the same thing, we just get some speed and limit. And so it looks like once it hits the, this move limit, and that's why you see that it moves all the way to the right, disappear, go back to the beginning. Uh, that's because of this move limit. And there you have it. Uh, pass in the time, delta time. And there you have it. I think that covers all the new stuff. There's an advanced um, Boyd's, which is... Um, uh, that has always been there. Um, if people want it, I can cover that in a little bit more depth, but there's definitely a lot more going on in there. That's with all the, you might have seen it in one of the technical um, presentations where there's like a bunch of shit, a um, bunch of fish flying over and then sharks flying through it and all cool stuff. But for now, I just wanted to cover these new examples. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, get some feedback, and remember to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.